Eric Darling here with Darling Data, doing my Darling Data damnedest to bring you the, the finest SQL Server content that's on YouTube. All right. Uh, that, that intro could use some work, I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll workshop that one. We're maybe we're, we're still processing that one. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about why you should not mix uh, date data types. Um, because there's a very interesting change that, that happened uh, between, uh, com in between compatibility levels. Basically, any compatibility level 130 or up, uh, the rules have changed. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this is probably a, a funny joke in there, but I'm not going to make it. Uh, anyway, uh, if, you, if you like this content and you feel like supporting my channel, uh, I, I do offer very, very low-cost paid memberships. That's a great way to just say thanks. Uh, if you can't do that, if for some reason you spent all your money on, uh, I don't know, drugs or um, booze or and other unsavory activities, um, you know, uh, in the words of Robert Palmer, she's so fine, there's no telling where the money went. <laughs> uh, unless you see the credit card statement. If you use cash, oh. Well, that's that's that you know that's between you and your accountant. Uh, if you if for some reason you can't uh, can't afford to do that, uh, you can do free stuff that makes me like doing free stuff, like like sub comment and subscribe to the channel. Uh, the, 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 it's not necessary to pay for the membership. You can just subscribe for free. Um, if you need SQL Server help, you need a consultant to come in and do things for you. I, I am I am that consultant. I'm a Beer Gut Magazine certified SQL Server consultant. Uh, I can do any of these things <clears throat> or whatever else you might need done. This is, these, these, these areas are where I specialize. Uh, other areas are where <clears throat> um, I, I, will, I, will, I will become a specialist if you pay me. <clears throat> uh, if you need SQL Server training, I have about 24 hours of performance tuning content. You can get it for 75% off. That brings the price down to about 150 USD. Uh, so, and that's and that's that's a lot. That's a lot of quality content for a very low price. If you look at the cost of other SQL Server training on the internet, uh, it is it is much more expensive. So, if you, another another way to say thank you, or, or to get better at SQL Server, you, see, you can say thank you and get something back for yourself. You can you can continue to be a little selfish in buying the training because you will get better at SQL Server and you will be able to do your job better. You will maybe not spend so many nights and weekends ba bashing keys uselessly Well, nothing gets faster. Um, upcoming events. I will be at uh, Data Saturday Dallas Friday, September 6th doing a full day pre-con. Uh, I'll also be at the, the actual event on September 7th as well. It's pretty much mandatory. Uh, and November 4th and 5th, I will be doing full day pre-cons with Kendra Little at Past Data Summit in Seattle. Um, because everyone always asks, I don't think there's a streaming option for those. You, you actually have to show up and put your butt in a seat. So um, let's move on. Let's get on with the show here. Let's look at what's, what's wrong with SQL Server. So the first thing that I need to preface this with is that I take no credit for the discovery of uh, or any of the demonstrations of this behavior. Um, this was all stuff that got worked out by two very smart people. Uh, Martin Smith, who I was I had the, the absolute pleasure of meeting once at SQL Bits, uh, and uh, of course, Paul White. Um, the, now, the, this all came from, this all started with a question on dba.stackexchange.com, where uh, someone using a, uh, an ORM, for shame, for shame the ORMs, uh, well, they were, you, the ORM was assigning a date time to data type to a parameter but, and comparing that date time to data type to a date time column. And they were wondering why this filtering would end up with this result. Because, you know, obviously, like, like w w if you're just looking at this, scratching your head, you're thinking, well, I don't understand how you could get this result from this filter value. It doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. And of course, Martin Smith went on to answer it with a great answer. Good job, Martin Smith. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there about it. There are even some helpful comments. And there's, there will be a link to this Q&A in the, the video uh, description uh, if you feel like reading through this more thoroughly. And of course, I would encourage you to vote this answer up. 
There is also a, uh, an open issue on, micro, uh, on the Microsoft's feedback site for uh, SQL Server. And the reason why I'm doing this video, you might be asking, why would, why would Eric Darling be doing a video showcasing how, how smart other people are? Um, it's because the smart, they deserve this recognition. Gosh darn it. And this, this, this just does not have enough upvotes for me. Right? This, the eight upvotes for uh, what I consider to be a, a pretty wild issue in SQL Server uh, is just not enough. This needs to be um, this, this, this needs to be addressed. Right? It's, this is this is not this is not fun. So let me show you the actual behavior now. Um, Paul White actually <clears throat> recently posted a an article on uh, on Twixter. <laughs> Uh, with a lot of details here. Um, this link will also be in the description. I would really suggest you go there for a thorough deep dive into why this is. I'm just going to show you the, the stuff that, you know, uh, you know, twisted my melon, baked my noodle uh, about it. So again, none of these demos are, are mine. They, they're all things that were used to describe the problem. And I just want to show them to you because they're, they're very interesting. So first, let's look at when we switch the database compatibility level of Stack Overflow to 120. If we run this query, uh, SQL Server will say that no, uh, 2001, d December, uh, sorry, January the 1st, 2001 at 0.003 milliseconds is not greater than the same date at 0.0033 Three, 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 three. Uh, that say no, that, that is not the case. However, if we flip the compatibility level to 130 and we run that same query, SQL Server will say, uh, yes, yes, it is greater. Uh, and this, all, this is all because uh, around 2016, and there's, there's actually a, a link to the article about this from Paul's article, so you have an extra reason to click on, on read Paul's article because there, there are many links and supporting evidence and documents about why this is, and they're all, they're all scary. <laughs> it's all terrifying. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so back in 2016, Microsoft changed a, a bunch of stuff about, the, about compilers, and the compilers changed this behavior. Now... Uh, I'm going to switch up to compat level 140. Uh, it doesn't matter. I could stay in 130 and do all this, but compat level 140 is where I do most of my work in. And if I don't make this change now, uh, I'll forget to do it, and then I'll go to do a demo, and I'll be like, wait a minute, why am I in compat level 130? Oh, the date and date time 2 video. And then I'll curse and kick, a, kick, kick something and break a toe. That won't well, be fun. So uh, what I want to show you, and this, this is the one that really freaked me out, <clears throat> because we're going to get different results depending on if there is an index or if there is not an index. All right? So watch this. We're going to de we, we declare um, a date time, um, and we set it to this, and then we set the date time to equal to that value cast as a date time to 7. All right? And then we're going to uh, insert that value into a date time column in a table variable. Now the table variable makes no difference here. It's not, this isn't a table variable problem. This is a mixing date time and date time two problem. So this would happen with a real table like we saw in the dba.stackexchange Q&A. This would happen in a temp table. This will happen any, anything, anytime you have compat level 130 or higher. So we're gonna, the first time that we create this, we're gonna, we have this index quoted out. <clears throat> so let's run these two queries. Uh, well actually, let's just run the whole thing. Here, and we get no results back from either of these, right? They're, they're, they're blank results when we say, uh, when we ask if the DT column equals the DT2 parameter or variable rather, and uh, even if we cast DT as date time equals DT2, there, there are no results. However, if we come back and we unquote that index, and we look at, oh, wow, somehow a semicolon got deleted there, now I have an L. <laughs> That's not fun. But if we redo this with an index in place, we get a result back. Huh? <laughs> why? If you want to know why, you should go read Martin's answer and Paul's article, and you should go upvote Martin's issue that, where this is filed as a bug with SQL Server because you're going to find out all of the awful nitty-gritty details there. I would feel like I am putting on uh, a weird costume if I were to try to speak in the language of Paul White and Martin Smith. I'm not as smart as them. They are tremendously smart people. Uh, and if I were to try to use their voice and explain this to you, it, it, would, it would, 
I would, I would feel like a fraud. So I'm going to tell you to go read their stuff. Go read this extra smart stuff. This should scare you enough to make you go read that stuff. This is big deal stuff for like your queries, especially ORMs are popular and ORMs are dumb. And ORMs do a lot of stuff like we saw in the Stack Overflow question where uh, they, they don't always get date time. They, they don't always get, sorry, not even date time. They don't always get data types exactly right, especially if you're just leaving, um, leaving it up to them to infer whatever the data type is. If you're not strongly typing uh, all of your parameters, you can end up with some really wacky stuff. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, if if you if you if you want if you feel like rewinding now and watching all the stuff that I that I said in the beginning of the video that you skipped over about liking and subscribing and consulting and training, it might be it would be kind of you to revisit that because who knows you might you might find something uh, you might find something in there that, that appeals to you, and that would appeal to me. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go do something else for a little bit, but because uh, I, I have I have I have other other tasks to other tasks to accomplish here. Recording videos is just a small small percentage of the tasks that I have. So I got to go do that. But uh, thank you for spending some time with me. <clears throat> Remember, uh, go read all this stuff. It's important. You're a data professional or you want to be a data professional, aspiring data professional. You need, you need, you need, to, you need to do this stuff to, to maintain your data professionalism. All right, cool. Once again, thank you for watching.